Welcome to the Fort Johnson Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff England, and we have a very special episode for you today. As we approach the holiday season, a time of reflection and gratitude, we're honored to have with us Chaplain Jeffries, the installation chaplain here at Fort Johnson. Chaplain Jeffries has been an integral part of our community, offering spiritual support and guidance to our service members and their families. And today he's here to share his thoughts on the importance of giving thanks, especially during this holiday season. Whether you're celebrating Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, or any other holiday during this season, giving thanks is a universal theme that resonates with us all. So sit back, grab a cup of hot cocoa, and join us in this heartfelt conversation with Chaplain Jeffries. Let us explore how we can cultivate gratitude in our lives and truly appreciate the blessings we have. Here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are listening or watching this podcast, I'm your host, Jeff England, from the Fort Johnson Public Affairs Office, and you are watching the uh, Fort Johnson podcast. Today, we have with us uh, Chaplain Jeffries. He is the installation chaplain. Uh, good morning. Oh, wait, and make sure that, yeah, I remember this time. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. How are you doing, sir? Good morning. I am doing well, Jeff. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, uh, holiday seasons are coming up, and you've been here for a little while. Is this going to be your first uh, holiday season with us, or is it the second one? This will be my second holiday season with us at, uh, here at Fort Johnson. Uh, so you know all about the Snowflake Festival and, and Thanksgiving and having to serve and, and all that stuff. That's, that's you know, that's, that's a big part. Uh, it's amazing how much that actually meant to me uh, was Thanksgiving and Christmas. I learned uh, a long time ago. Actually, I learned in basic training that Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner are the best, the best um, meals in in the chow hall. Well, dining facility. Well, exactly. That's really you know, being in the Army for a while. That's really an opportunity, particularly Thanksgiving for our 92 golfs, really to show off all their skills. Like I said, they bring the whole game on Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, I like the uh, – oh, and then there's one more. Aspect, well, at this place, um, I've noticed is really awesome, not at any of the places I got to serve, but the uh, Super Bowl is also yep. a great time to go because they have the uh, the wings and the, the whole setup. Uh, it's great. And uh, so – but uh, the first holiday coming up is Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving is a – well, it's a day of giving thanks, of course, but uh, it's been a holiday since Abraham Lincoln made it a holiday in the 1800s when he was requested by uh, this lady. I forget, I forget her name, but she wanted a day of prayer, yep. and um, and Abraham Lincoln, knowing that you can't really make a law uh, regarding one religion, so he instead compromised and made it a day of giving thanks, which now everyone can uh, participate in. Yeah, absolutely. But as you mentioned earlier in the intro, you know, that that opportunity to talk about gratitude and giving thanks is is universal across, you know, faith groups of, of taking that time to reflect and, and think of, you know, not only sometimes we can get tunnel visioned in on just uh, the things that have gone wrong throughout the year and lose track of, of all the stuff that's gone right, but all the things we truly got to be thankful for. Yeah, I uh, I actually, I, I zero in on all the stuff I've done wrong. I don't know. It's, it's something I've done all my life, and it's kind of annoying because I can't get over a lot of the stuff. It's like, oh, man, oh, man, I I was such an idiot as a kid. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I think it's part of human nature. You know, it, 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 when something goes right, we think, okay, that's right, like, move on to the next thing. It's when we get stuck is, is when something has gone wrong or didn't turn out the way we wanted to. But that's, again, the importance of, of sometimes just pumping the brakes and stopping to say, hey, what, what really did go right? You know, what, what happened? You know, all the, I say all the studies for building resiliency and those things, one of the key components is always come back to gratitude. You know, what are the things that you are thankful for in life? And, and are you remembering and taking note of those? So you do realize, hey, things, there were some things that did go well. You know, and I'm as bad as you are because I often tell folks I am much more comfortable when it goes wrong because that's just kind of what I expect. I get surprised when it works and goes right. It's like, well, of course, of course. <laughs> why, why wouldn't it? And then when something doesn't go wrong, it's like, oh, shoot, what did I forget? <laughs> My mom always forgot. Every Thanksgiving, it was a tradition. She would always forget one thing. You know, it's like, oh, no, the potatoes. Oh, the, the stuffing. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> 
<laughs> but no, the, when I was growing up, the uh, the stuffing was actual <laughs> stuffing. It was in the bird. In the bird, yep. yep. And now uh, apparently somebody along the way got sick because they didn't cook the turkey right. properly. And now stuffing a bird is, is taboo or bad or something. That's like, I don't know. But... Uh, you know, around here, I, I deep fry my turkey, so <laughs> stuffing is a little a little hard to do. It's hard to do with a deep fried turkey. Yeah. But, but that's the great debate in my in my wife and I's marriage and our family growing up, because she grew up where her mom stuffing was in the bird, baked in the bird for Thanksgiving, and and growing up, I say in Georgia, and all stuffing was always cornbread dressing cooked completely separate from everything. And uh, one of those great you know marriage debates of hey, how do we how do we work this out? So. So my wife told me how it was going to work out, and I went with that. <laughs> yeah, I made a, uh, I made a, uh, a stuffing. Mm -hmm. No, no, it was a dressing. a dressing. I made a dressing. It was a cornbread dressing Good. with uh, – it was supposed to be dried cherries. So, yeah. But I couldn't find any dried cherries, so I made uh, craisins, uh, uh -huh. dried cranberries. cranberries. So it was cranberry. It was a, a cranberry dressing, and it was so good. <laughs> it was so good. It's like, But I'm so used to the stuffing that just, like, sticks together and all that stuff. Yeah, and I think I think you bring up a good point, particularly as we go into the holidays and, and for Thanksgiving. You know, it's sometimes it's those unintentional moments that just really turned out right, and uh, that we look back and forth. It, there, there's a term called serendipity, which is is the curious discovery along the way of something you weren't looking for. And I think Thanksgiving helps us to stop and think, hey, what what surprised me this last year? You know, that that really turned out right. I turned out well, or you know. I didn't. I didn't have the dried cherries that I thought I needed for the dressing, but I, but I tried craisins, you know, dried cranberries, and it really worked out well. It's those parts of life when we're surprised by joy that I think Thanksgiving also helps us slow down and look at and really be able to enjoy those special moments that we didn't anticipate or even think were coming, but showed up anyway. Yeah, that's the, that's one of the best things about uh, Thanksgiving, and you know, m most of my adult life has been Thanksgiving in um, the military. Yep. So, or in one way or another, which is so. unique, in, like you say, in of itself. Not not many families say, "Hey, we're going to the defact for Thanksgiving." <laughs> but again, it's a fantastic bill. It, 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 you, the, the variety is great. Anyway, I'm, uh, and a lot of people, a lot of the soldiers around here, or I don't know how many, but I've always. As a single airman, I was always being invited to somebody's house for Thanksgiving. Some somebody is, is always inviting uh, the single soldiers and, and somebody like that. So you know, keep an eye out for that. And <laughs> but um, the thing that I loved most about um, traveling around and being in areas that I did not grow up in opened me up to all these different traditions mm -hmm. and different uh, thought processes and beliefs and food. Yeah. And um, the one or one of the pl most pleasant things that I learned is because when I grew up, um, uh, I don't like lima beans. Mm -hmm. But when I got down here, it was uh, I saw some things that looked like lima beans on the table. And I said, oh, those, oh, I don't, I don't care for lima beans. They said, no, those aren't lima beans. Those are butter beans. <laughs> and so I tried them and it's like, oh my God, these are so good. <laughs> and like, like you said, it's the surprises, the, the nice surprises that, uh, that now I love butter beans, yeah. <laughs> which is a nice surprise. <laughs> but uh, Thanksgiving. So uh, the other things that we got to worry about is the safety. And I'm, and I yep. might actually do something on safety because the the last thing you want to do is deep fry a frozen turkey well, well yeah <laughs> and, and especially you know if, if your your first time because you know you two can make it look so easy until you realize you haven't dried the bird or completely followed the bird out that uh, and it goes wrong but uh yep it hits that it hits that what 350 degree uh <laughs> scalding hot oil and flash Flash boils the uh, water instantly. Oh, absolutely. So the uh, so what are some of your uh, traditions for Thanksgiving? I'm sure you celebrate Thanksgiving. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to assume that you celebrate Thanksgiving or any kind of giving thanks. We, you know, <laughs> you know it, it is a big part that uh, you know you know for me from a from a chaplain role one obviously faith plays a, a big role into it of of how i perceive god's blessings where he's been at work in, at, in my life my family's life and uh, my wife and i had uh, in the bill to celebrate but part of it is kind of like a lot of the military community you know thanksgiving and christmas also becomes that time when you're trying to coordinate schedules and travel and to be with family you know is, is family coming in and are we going to where they're at and uh, this i think last year we traveled for thanksgiving this year we're traveling for christmas and uh and, and to stay back here, but wherever we're at, it's really trying to figure out how do we, how do we incorporate community 
Yeah, no, into it. How do we bring others into it, whether it be other family members? If we're here, who, who, are we, who are we inviting over? Or oftentimes, we're the guests invited over. Whose house are we going to to celebrate Thanksgiving? Yeah, yeah the, being a guest, uh, it's, it's nice, but you don't get those days and days of leftovers. It's like you got turkey sandwiches, turkey a la king, turkey this, turkey that, turkey spaghetti. Turkey. <laughs> oh, it's the turkey sandwiches. I just I could eat those for days, and usually I do. <laughs> yeah, that, I think one of the the, the funnest things we've done. Yeah, because one, again, sometimes the holidays can get stressful. You get overwhelmed with with, with how much stuff you're trying to get done. It, it, by, by, my wife is phenomenal. And, uh, and a tremendous cook, but sometimes it gets over on them. So when we were stationed at now Fort Cavazos, and, uh, her mom and dad were coming in, folks coming over. So in order just to make it easier where we can enjoy the presence of each other and not get caught up in that, you know, we'd, we'd order the meal in from Cracker Barrel or somewhere and bring everything in and didn't serve that. And then it was already prepackaged, so we could send it home with folks as they left, too. Yeah. Oh, man, I just uh, – leftovers. Yeah. Hey, I don't know what it is. There's certain foods that just are better as leftovers, mm-hmm. like, like spaghetti, chili, anything that – any yeah. stew, you know, anything that needs to blend, and Thanksgiving. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and anything that warms up well or easily. Or easily, Yeah, yes. easily. So um, we've got Thanksgiving, and uh, actually this time of year is uh, – it's getting darker. It's colder. It's uh, people start noticing that you know they're, they're alone, or you know uh, soldiers are out for the first time away from family. They don't have time to get home. They don't have the money to get home. Um, they get uh, lonely or sad. And uh, uh, your the chaplains are there to help, and they're there to talk to. You know, if if you're if you're lonely, or if you just need a, a voice or somebody to talk to, or just to get out of the the room, and, and instead of going to the bars or going to downtown or going shopping sure. and, and wasting your money, and you know, you just need you just need somebody to talk to, and and you you guys are there to to help and give a little advice. Absolutely, you know, one of the. One of the key things we do, and one of the unique roles of of the Army chaplaincy, it, uh, is is that our focus is not only not only faith development from for whatever that individual's background and tradition is to help them grow and mature in their faith, but is how do we look at the programming that we do? How do we build community? How do we how do we have programming that allows folks to come in and get to know each other? To, to deal with alone so you don't feel isolated in, in where you're at, that you're connected with other people. You know, we have uh, several programs at the chapel. I know you had Ms. Gross here with, the, with religious education, and that's really one of the things we look at. You know, our chaplains are available for counseling, for one-on-one to be able to talk about, and, and most of us love to talk, so that's no problem. We'll sit down and talk <laughs> for hours and, uh, with you and listen to what's going on in your life to make that human-to-human connection because sometimes it's, it's how do we get – not only talk to the uniform itself, but how do we talk to the person in the uniform to meet them and get to know, hey, where are you from? What were your traditions growing up? What, you know, what are your life? What are your goals for being in the army to find those things? But then, whether it's like our, our Catholic women of the chapel, our our parents of little kids at Fort Johnson, Polk at Johnson Group, it's also opportunity for families and spouses, and even what we've noticed is a lot of kids and all to be able to come together to get to know their friends, their neighbors who live on post here to realize, oh, we're not alone. You know, most of us are, I say, are facing the same op-tempo or, and, and things going on, looking concerned about world events and what's going on. We're either sailing in from a move, getting ready for the move, or anticipating the next move. But to be able to have that community, to be connected, to go, you know what? If we're willing to get out and engage, there's places and there's healthy communities that we can plug into to get to know other folks and to realize we're not doing this journey alone. And particularly, we're not doing this Army journey alone. There are others who are along with us that we could connect with. And one of the things, again, we like to do through the chapel is build faith and maturity in individuals' faith, but help people get connected. And it hopefully, you know, remove some stereotypes you know, around religion. A lot of I say a lot of folks. Some folks don't have as much familiarity or just kind of, kind of seem strange to them. But when we're able to connect them and, and, and they get together with others, like, oh, well, this is fairly, this is fairly normal and enjoyable thing to do, you know, is to be able to connect and get to know folks and build that sense of community and, uh, while you're, you know, particularly while you're here at any installation, but specifically for us while we're here at Fort Johnson. Yeah, I used to uh, go to church when I was uh, when I was a kid growing up, and uh, it was always so boring for me because you know it's well, first of all, ADHD, so that <laughs> I couldn't sit still, I couldn't keep concentrating, all that stuff, and then uh, actually. Uh, 
when I joined the military, I was a, a chapel guide mm -hmm. for it while in basic. And so I went to all the different uh, services and I got to see some, I got to see some crazy stuff. It was, it, you had uh, all these different services and they're all different. Some are really upbeat and lively. Others are very solemn and, and, and serious. And, um, but then I got here and I got to, I go to, um, or I can go to um, St. Michael's. Yep. Uh, downtown or down in in Leesville, in Leesville. Uh, with my mother-in-law and I went this one time and it was the first time that I actually connected right. with it and it, what the priest said the father was up there uh, saying the story and and giving an example and all that and I just listened and it's like oh my gosh I can actually connect with this and it made me it made me actually want to get closer back into it so the um i don't know is there how hard would it be for me to get back in because you know i i i'm i've got to a certain point but it's been a long time since i've been back um you guys have service or help over there to if someone is interested in getting into uh, one of the uh, programs over there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's one, you know, you know one, we always appreciate when people that come to a chapel or, or, or any of our programs because we realize for a lot there's there's that anxiety. Anxiety of I haven't done this for a long time. Am I going to stand out? Is it going to seem weird? You know, are, are they going to look at me like, oh, where have you been for the past 20 years? Especially in a Catholic church, because you got you got all these lines to remember. And it's like, actually, when I, well, growing up, it was like, um, uh, 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 there was, you have to, the priest says something, and then you respond you with respond. something. And, and I'm sitting there saying the old response, like, oh, no, we changed that. It's like, oh, great. Okay. <laughs> When did that happen? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but here, here on post, and, and and I'm glad you had a great experience in Leesville, St. Michael's. Well, one, you don't have to worry about it. We're you, you are welcome, and anyone is welcome to come in, and we'll help incorporate you. We'll help you figure out what the, I say the traditions and kind of the flow of things at our location is, and because we also know we've all been there, we've all been to our our first time walking into a congregation, going, okay, what's you know, not only what are the culture, but what's the customs? When do they when do they do the offering? When do announcements come in? What, um, how long are, are, are there typical sermons or whatnot? And uh, and to be able to help you understand. And one of the things we try and do, you know, for for Unity Fellowship, the Protestant service, and, and but for our Catholic services, is, is oftentimes it's just the easy things. Hey, you know, watch cares down that hallway. The bathrooms are on this hallway and that hallway to really help folks feel home, but that, that they're our guests and we care about them and, uh, and we want them to, to be able to participate and know where things are and, uh, and that there's, I say, no no extra judgment or anything for, for coming in. We are glad you're there and, and want you to be a part of, of who we are and part of the community. Because again, research goes into in spiritual resiliency, into faith, is that as we can deepen and mature that and connect folks to healthy communities, it just continues to the roll over in building healthier communities and, and to help people have a better experience, a better experience in the army, a better experience here at Fort Johnson going, Hey, you know, I was concerned coming there. I heard it was isolated and there wasn't much around there, but I met the greatest people at all while I was there. And that's what we're really trying to do is create that kind of community and particularly over the holidays. And, and particularly if you're not traveling that you got, Hey, I got a place to celebrate. I got a place that, that recognizes who I am and that I can be a part and uh, over this time. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Thanksgiving is a good time to be thankful for uh, the safety that we have here. I mean, the, the world is uh, going crazy okay. right now, um, and it might be a good time to start praying. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, the services that you have over there, it's uh, you, what's uh, you have all different uh, you have all different kinds of religions and uh, mm -hmm. services over there. I've I've heard of some non. Uh, not mainstream yep. kind of things, uh, but if there is a if there is an interest, it is it's your job to make sure that everyone that has need is uh, is helped as best we can. Oh, absolutely! You know, one of the, the one of the uniqueness that we can lose sight of, I say at times, and, and maybe it's just from a chaplain perspective. You know, the the First Amendment of the Constitution guarantees a freedom of religion, and and the chaplain corps exists to help the individual exercise that, and uh, as it comes. As as they are in the army and experience that, 
like I say, we have I say the traditional, we have the Protestant service, the Unity Fellowship, we conduct the Catholic Mass and offer worship on Sunday and, uh, to facilitate and, uh, the individuals who come from that background to help them grow. We have programming throughout the week, whether it be you know, our Wednesday night is our, our huge religious education where both the Protestant community, Catholic community, and, uh, and even our pagan community from times participate and are a part of it and, uh, and to be able to help out. And then we have Protestant women in the chapel, Catholic women in the chapel, parents of little kids, Polk at Johnson, and uh, that we help people come together. And all of them are, are faith-based in, in some form or fashion. And, uh, but there is a, a huge variety that goes along with it. Like I say, we have a, a, a fairly significant portion of, of Norse pagan and, and, and pagan and, uh, individuals on post. So we've really helped kind of organize them, support them, but to build community and, uh, with them as, as they celebrate just different seasons uh, of the year. One of the unique things you know, about as, as we finish up Halloween, it, it, it runs across the, the idea of, of remembering our ancestors and those who have gone before us and um, runs across multiple faiths. So just about every group had something going on this, this past you know, week with Halloween taking place in helping support that going forward and figuring out how we cooperate. But as, and, and as, you, as you mentioned, as we go into the Christmas season, it, it's helping how do we help our Jewish soldiers connect in and, uh, and the remembrance of Hanukkah, the celebration of lights, which is uh, fabulous, and they really start off with Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah at the beginning of the holiday season back in, in September, but helping support them, and a lot of times it's, it's helping bring them together. Sometimes it's, it's online helps and helping coordinate that, and uh, we'll help with our, our, our Muslim soldiers as we get to special days, particularly Ramadan, but help them. And, uh, and, and thankfully, we have some great people, what we call distinctive faith group leaders, you know, here on post for our soldiers that really, for, for those where, where we fall short, you know, obviously I, as a, as, as a Southern Baptist endorsed chaplain, you know, can't lead the Jewish service and, um, and I'm with it, but we got, you know, soldiers who are able to step up and say, Hey, sir, if you let me, I'll help organize and bring it together. And I said, Roger. And, um, it let folks know that could connect, I say, as much as we can, because the army is a broad spectrum of people. And we recognize that and, uh, it look for ways, Hey, how do we support you and encourage you and, um, and, and and not try what I say. Well, I think we need to help people realize. Sometimes we think we try and fit everybody into the same box. No, no, you you get the box you came with. Now we can talk about the other boxes, but you get the box you came with. Well, maybe maybe uh, try to squeeze everybody into the same building. That's one time. We just do. not at one time. <laughs> yeah, there are times when we think and uh, we wonder if our building is big enough because there's been times where we're maxed out, going, ooh, we're out of space. <laughs> That's crazy. The um, now Thanksgiving. We we covered Thanksgiving. Yeah. I can't cover Thanksgiving enough. Uh, I just went through a fast so Ooh, yeah. uh, so food is like really on my <laughs> mind right now <laughs> and especially turkey and stuffing and gravy and mashed yeah. potatoes and cranberry cranberries oh uh, here cranberry sauce do you like the uh, the the one that comes out and shaped like a can or do you like the fresh cranberries now, now my wife does pick them and my wife loves fresh cranberries now, but I the treasure for me growing up as a as a kid was the cranberry sauce that comes out of the can and mom slices it so you got round yep, slices yep, of cranberry yep. sauce. <laughs> and, and for me, that, that's 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 Thanksgiving because that's the way I always knew and, uh, until I got married. I didn't even, you know, if you would ask me how we, how we grow cranberries, I don't know where cranberries come. They, they come out of a can. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> that's, a, that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> it's like sliced perfectly. Looks that's like, right. It looks like black pudding. So from, it's got those from, little rings on it for exactly. you so you know where to slice it. I said, why do they have rings? It's It's decorative. <laughs> So, uh, describe describe your 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 perfect Thanksgiving dinner. Ooh, yeah. See, I, I, ah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> well, you got me because you know, again, a lot of it. You know, a lot of traditions come back from us growing up as kids, and and growing up, and you know, it was always cornbread dressing, and uh, and with it, and 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 the, and the gravy, the giblet gravy that mom made, oh, yeah. and the cranberry sauce, and, and so that's really one of my favorite things. You know, is is is, is cornbread dressing at all uh, with, with with giblet gravy, and, uh, it, it, and and piling. I say piling up is as, as high as I can possibly think. As a kid, <laughs> it was much easier. Now it doesn't work out. No, but but that's my meal. <laughs> you know, in, in, in Turkey, I'm, I'm not as big a Turkey fan. I do like ham, and usually we have both. And um, but but having having the, the cornbread dressing is is my favorite part. See, I, we you know I'm the same. Well, I'm I'm turkey for Thanksgiving yeah. and ham for Easter. Yeah. So okay. it, I I just I don't know. I it's just turkey yeah. is is the fall and winter thing, which is weird because turkey season around here is spring. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, exactly. You know, but it, but it, but it's helping. You know, as we talk about the holidays, it, 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 for me, and maybe it's because I'm getting as as I get older, continue to get older, it becomes that grounding thing in our life. It really helps ground and solidify who we are, where we're come from, what what goals are we looking at. But it brings us back to again that grounding when the world, kind of like you talked about, sometimes it seems like it's going chaotic. It helps ground us back to reality, but where we are. And, uh, and steadies things out for us as we look forward to going into the new year. Absolutely. So now, um, now that we've gone through Thanksgiving, let's uh, let's get into Christmas. <laughs> you know, I I get so angry at people that put out Christmas decorations before Halloween. It's like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> let's let's slow down with the Christmas creeping here. <laughs> like, no, come on. You get the whole month of December. <laughs> Halloween gets like one day <laughs> or maybe a week or if we're lucky. Week, yeah. uh, Thanksgiving Thanksgiving gets a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we get to Christmas and Christmas is the time we've got uh, we've got all kinds of stuff. It's it's a big religious holiday right. for all religions or this air this time of uh, season yep. for all religions out there. Uh, even even me. <laughs> no. But uh, we got Christmas coming up, and that's going to be cold weather, uh, darkness. So we have to be safe and 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 think of your pets and think of your children and um, think of driving in the dark and driving. being tired. Uh, but also think of family and think of others and uh, and uh, make sure that that if you don't, the thing that I noticed is that if you don't want to spend money on gifts. Uh, Christmas is not about receiving, it's about giving. And there are other ways to give. Um, there's a soup kitchen down yep. in DeRitter. And how are there other ways that somebody can give without like having to spend a bunch of money? Well, I think, well, I say I think we are. You know, it, one of the great things, that, you know, about Christmas, as, as, as you talked about, is the opportunity to give to others. And we got, you know, on, on post, you know, we have several events coming up that the boss is getting ready for their toy drive. So it's an opportunity to be able to, to, to go out and it doesn't have to be extravagant toys to be able to get together. And then, you know, we participate in the boss toy drive. You know, for the chapel community, we'll participate in, uh, in Samaritan's Purse Operation Christmas Child, where you, you just take a shoebox, you put some school supplies and some simple toys and things in there to be able to, to give back and to give around the world. But there's local opportunities, you know, in, in, in soup kitchens and in, in, uh, even. Even in our own food pantry, we'll have the chapel do what we call Operation Helping Hands, which you know, we'll, we'll give out donations of commissary cards to help families to be able to have a little extra, to be able to prepare for all the meals and all that goes into it. And, uh, and, and we're fortunate that even the, the commissary you know, helps donate food items to us because there's some actual food items we'll be able to hand out. And I'm, I'm sure some canned cranberry sauce will be in there along the way. <laughs> but, to, but to be able to help and take care of others, because again, the strength of the community is when we come back together and, and really start looking at how do we help take care of each other, that we, I don't know if I'll phrase this right, that we belong to each other in a degree that we, we live in, in the same community. So how do we make it better for both of us? And, and kind of like we talked about with Thanksgiving, sometimes you're the one that, uh, that is preparing the meal and having the folks over, and sometimes you're the guest. And it's amazing that, that oftentimes people are very comfortable being the one giving, being the one receiving for some folks becomes a challenge, but it's helping to go both ways. How do we receive from and give to each other in the midst of these holiday seasons? It just, again, that sense of connection and being healthy as a community together and really feel like, all right, you know, I was worried, you know, what this military life would be being away from home. But you find out that home oftentimes is provided where you're at. And uh, by the folks you get to know, the friends you get to make there. Absolutely, the uh, <laughs> I know exactly. I, I'm I'm usually the one that that does stuff uh, that and does stuff by himself. I, I I don't ask for help. So when other people ask me for help, I I'll go help, not a problem. But receiving uh, receiving and getting, and it's like uh, somebody you know people invite used to invite me over all the time, and I just felt so uncomfortable uh, accepting and going over there. And, yeah, but you know, I would force myself, and then when I'd get over there, I'd have a really good time, yeah. and and everything worked out great. Uh, and never show up empty-handed uh, yeah. is is my philosophy. Yeah. I don't know how much it is other people's, but oh, it, it offer uh, it's an offering. Yeah. Oh, look at that! Like in church. <laughs> well, it is. It, it's an offering, and it, it, it's you know, it, it, it's. It, 
not to, not to just say it's manners, it's just manners, but you know, part of it is just an offering going, hey, I recognize you have gone out of your way to, to, to have me over, so I wanted to bring you know, flowers or, 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 or the, the drinks or something at a, along the way. That's just a, a gift of, of courtesy and, and respect. But like I said, I think the way you put it is, is, is great, an offering of saying you know, thank you, you know, for thinking enough to have me over and allowing me to be a part. But it, again, it, it's, you know, it's one of those customs. How do we learn to, to live in community with Dutch? How do those, some of the simple things, you know, the, the art of learning to write the thank you notes is something I've been trying to develop over the years. I'm not just saying thank you, but actually handwriting a note and giving it to somebody going, hey, thank you for inviting us over to the house or allowing us to be a part of this occasion, whatever it may be. You know what really works for uh, the government workers around here is an ice comment. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, t- I tell you, we, I can't complain too much about ICE comments. We have, we have a, a fantastic community at the chapel, and, uh, and we've, we've been fortunate. We've gotten more positive ICE comments at all for what, our, for what our team has done over there for folks to help them feel at home and give them a place to belong, and uh, it, it, we, are, we are truly thankful for that. But, yes, it all, it, it, you know, one of the unique things of the government and in the military is, is ICE comments. <laughs> I like you know, and it's so easy. I mean, just go in there and just whatever. But uh, the the ones that I, I've noticed are um, are really hard to take seriously are the ones that don't have a name attached. They're anonymous. Yeah. So it's like, oh, this is a really great uh, uh, comment that you got from anonymous. From an- you sent that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah, you got me. <laughs> but um, we got Christmas. Uh, what are some of the special programs that we got going on for uh, Christmas? The, um, I know we got the Snowflake Festival, and, but that's not the chaplain stuff. Well, that's not the chaplain stuff, but that's a great event. We'll be there because you know, we love it because we, you know, we have some talented uh, – Chaplain Meyer, my deputy, his wife, Catherine, is very talented artistically. And uh, so she'll paint up you know, the, the, the four-by-eight plywood Christmas card that we make, which is one of the – like you talked about traveling around the Army, different traditions. I hadn't done that in any other location, but it's phenomenal. And, uh, and I'm always amazed at, at the projects that the units put together with that. But we'll have that – and uh, we'll have on, on 9 December, we'll have what we call a Christmas around the world where we're working with a lot of our different, I say international families, but international wives from different parts of the world, whether it be Hispanic, Italian, you know, I think we're looking for some, some of our, if we have anybody with German spouses, but some of our Korean spouses to be able to come together. And as we talked about food, bring some particular dishes from that part of the world that come oh, together on yeah. the 9th of December. So we got that coming up. Then there will be our, our, I say our traditional, you know, Christmas Eve services. And uh, that'll be happening you know, for both our Catholic community and, and our Protestant community on Christmas Eve, which is, that's always one of my favorite services throughout the year. And um, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, which I'm going to mess up the date because I want to say it's the 29th. I'm not sure if I remember it right. The we'll Sunday do. after Thanksgiving? Yeah. I, it might be. No, I, it might be the 30th. Let's see. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll figure it out. The yeah. Sunday after Thanksgiving is uh, 26th. 26th, yeah, yeah. 26th. We'll do the greening of the chapels where we start putting up decorations and Christmas decorations that are happening. And uh, with that, so we'll put up decorations. Then we'll have a chili cook-off that afternoon. Ooh, after, chili cook-off? Oh, yeah. And, uh, and You're going to send me invites to all that's these right. things, That's right. We'll send right? you invites okay, to all that, Jeff, to be a part <laughs> of it. And um, as we got going forward, so we'll be going through those things. And we're still planning out that um, – what we need, I say, how we can support our Jewish soldiers for Hanukkah, and uh, and what we need for that as that's coming up. Oh, yeah. we could get the 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 fried potato cakes. Yeah. Yes, that would be good. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually, I would, you know, the uh, Passover seder would be would be awesome to uh, to participate in. You know, just just that in you know, and a lot of people say that that you know. Uh, Christianity and Judaism is similar, but it's different. Well, yeah, Jesus at the Last Supper was at a Passover Seder. Yes. So we got, I mean. Yep. And last year we led one. Chaplain Meyer had, uh, has, has experience of, of leading those. Last year as we're coming up towards Easter, then, uh, we did a Passover Seder because there's symbolism in, in each of the elements, whether it be the bitter herbs and the, the sweet, I call it applesauce, probably the best way to put it, but the applesauce <laughs> comes along with it. And um, the, the, the lamb the lamb shank and, uh, is part of But each of the each of the elements have a symbolism and, and is telling the story. And of you know, from a Jewish perspective, of what Passover means, and, uh, and then as 
you know, as Christianity sprang forth from Judaism, you know, of, of, of what that means, you know, for the salvation that we enjoy in Christ as well. And, but it is, it is phenomenal. What we'll you know, this coming Easter season, and if we do one again, we'll have to invite you, you know, to that. That'd be awesome. And to be a part of it, because it, it is, it, it's, it's a fun time. It would, and especially with all the food. And uh, yeah, I'd love, uh, international food is just, yep. it's the bomb. Uh, it is, it's, I, I love Korean food. I love German food, Italian, you know, you name it. I love it. What? <laughs> and I'm with you. But again, it, it's looking, it, 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 and thankfully, I got a very creative staff of folks that, uh, who worked there at the chapel. It's by no means just me. But I'm looking for hey, creative ways. How do we help you know, bring families together? And particularly, like I say, if, if we have you know, families who are from, I say, Elsewhere in, in the world, like I say, you know, in, in the Army, we have a large percentage of, you know, of, of soldiers who have married German spouses, German families, Korean families, and uh, that are part of it. How do we help bring them in? At all? I think we have, um, we may have you know, a couple of African dishes coming in because we got families that, that are originally from Africa that are part and um, around the Nigeria and, uh, area and uh, they're coming in. And, and, and again, how do we? As we talked about, how do we how do we get to know each other? How do we get to appreciate some of the customs and uh, of different parts of the world, and, uh, and to realize you know a lot of the ways of how we're similar, you know more so than different in things. It, it, you know, one of the it, it's the simple discoveries for me. Time when we were stationed in Germany, it, it's kind of learning that you know that schnitzel and pommes frites is oh. country fried steak and fries. You know, anything else is just the, the, the German variety of it. <laughs> Going, I'm like. And you go put gravy on it too? Yeah, this is amazing. Put more gravy on there. Let me have, you know, <laughs> Palmas Fritz and Schnitzel. I am in. I'm in. And, 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 <laughs> you know, I could just, I could go on uh, all day, all day Thanks. just talking, talking to you about all these different things. And uh, you do have uh, websites and, well, you got the, you got the army.mil. Uh, we got the army.mil. And uh, if you look up uh, Fort Johnson Chapel on Facebook, you'll find our Facebook site there. That'll let you know of all the things that are coming up with there. And, uh, and, and off that, it'll also link you to, there's a, 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 a Google bulletin board and uh, they've gotten so used to using the QR code to scan it. And the QR code's all over the chapel, but I have a list of all the things that are happening there. But Facebook is probably the number one way, as, as well as you can just call the, 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 the chaplain's office. You know. Well, excellent. Excellent. And then, um, of course, oops. And then, of course, we got the uh, uh, the we. So, yep. uh, sir, thank you for coming in. I so appreciate uh, appreciate your taking your time out of your busy schedule for coming in and talking to me. And uh, I hope to have you back soon uh, for another try or another maybe Easter or, or whatever. You know, you you tell me when you want to come back in. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Hey, it is. Hey, it has been phenomenal being with you, Jeff, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. And, and really, I say as we come to Thanksgiving, thank you to our Fort Johnson community. You know, we we kind of like many people came here a year and a half ago with a little bit of trepidation of, hey, what is it going to be like, and uh, where we're going, and um, you know, just because again, it's a change. But the community here, and you know, all, is is really fantastic, and um, and really, I say the community. In, in our garrison and across post and, uh, that help support us, our MWR folks are amazing. But again, the other soldiers and families we've gotten to know here have just been incredible. So thank you to them and uh, and, and really wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and, uh, and a happy holiday season. If you're, if you're celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas, you know, happy Hanukkah to folks as we're going into that. We really wish you the best and are just proud to be part of this community. Well, excellent. Thank you for being here, sir. And I'm Jeff England. I would like to wish everybody a um, happy Chris Mahana Kwanzaa and uh, uh, from here from the Fort Pol or Fort Johnson I'm, I'm still having problems with that Fort Johnson uh, Public Affairs Office you've been listening to the Fort Johnson podcast listening watching anyway <laughs> and we'll be listening at you later that was easy